Every significant endeavor that has withstood the test of time has been supported by a steady foundation. In 1830, when God restored his truth upon the earth, it was more essential than ever before to have a strong foundation, a stalwart group of saints that would be pillars of strength for generations to come. While some would be required to withstand great spiritual struggles, others would need to endure immense physical and emotional persecution, and largely, for one man, the responsibility of bearing the early church's financial burdens was given, and marvelously upheld. Everything we understand about Newell K. Whitney, um, uh, kind of a steady character, but a little quiet, and very temporal oriented, knew how to manage affairs, knew how to be a good steward. Uh, he seems to be a very careful record keeper. He seems to have an eye for a, an opportunity. He seems not to over invest, but to sort of start small and build up. Um, that's, that's good judgment. From his humble beginning as the eldest son of nine children in Marlboro, Vermont, Newell Kay grew into an influential businessman and stalwart saint very quickly. At the age of 19, he began selling supplies to the American Army. This experience led him to Kirtland, Ohio, where he opened his now historic store. Newell Kay quickly became successful and his wife, Ann Smith, remarked, he accumulated property faster than most of his companions and associates. Newell Kay's unique skills coupled with determination made him very successful, and he opened several more stores within the area in the next few years. In 1830, Newell K. Whitney was baptized and began to make his mark on the early history of the church. Only a few months after being baptized, the Prophet Joseph Smith met Newell K. Whitney for the first time. He shook his hand, called him by name, and said, Thou art the man. Joseph had seen in vision them praying. So when he got there, that's why he, as soon as he saw him, he'd already seen him in vision. He said, Newell K. Whitney, thou art the man. And he said, you prayed me here, now what do you want? And that started a relationship between Newell K. Whitney and Joseph Smith that lasted until the Joseph was martyred in 1844. From that point on, the prophet Joseph Smith relied heavily upon Newell K. Whitney for countless resources and unwavering support. Not only did Whitney provide food and shelter for the prophet and his family, he provided financial support and employment for many of the early saints. It would be simplistic to say that Newell K. Whitney was a devout member of the church and an astute businessman. He was much more than that. Playing an integral part in the early growth of the church, he served as a bishop, and later as the presiding bishop until his death. In addition, his business, the Newell K. Whitney Store, served as not only the first bishop's storehouse, but as a home and office for the Prophet Joseph Smith where he received 20 revelations and maintained the school of the prophets in an upstairs room. Upon being called as bishop, Whitney remarked to Joseph Smith, I cannot see a bishop in myself, Brother Joseph, but if you say it is the Lord's will, I will try. Look at Whitney did it. He doesn't apostatize, he doesn't gripe, he doesn't complain. He submits, he humbles himself, and he is loyal to the prophet. And so the prophet could count on Newell K. Whitney. And in terms of the church's stewardship and financial affairs, it's a huge problem. And Newell K. Whitney was a guy they could always count on. As the persecutions began to rage against the saints, forcing them farther west, Whitney and his family gathered in Utah where he continued to serve faithfully as the bishop until his death on September 24, 1850. After Whitney's death, his businesses and properties were dismantled and sold. Over time, many have forgotten the crucial assistance that he played in the early life of the church. Newell K. Whitney was a business pioneer, an honest and loving husband and father, and a humble hero for the church. Joseph Smith truly proved prophetic when he declared, Newell K. Whitney, thou art the man.